Getting Relationships Right How to Build Resilience and Thrive in Life, Love, and Work by Melanie Joy. Protecting each other's sense of security is at the heart of a healthy relationship. People with resilient relationships tend to enjoy more success and contentment in life. Resilient relationships depend on two aspects, security and connection. Relationships are the result of interactions between people. Thus, you have control over how they develop. Acting in a way that builds resilience requires practice, however. Much of what people learn about relationships through parent figures or popular media is dysfunctional. To create security within a relationship, each individual needs to show, through actions, that he or she is trustworthy and concerned about the other person's safety. When we feel unsafe, our primary focus is on creating safety for ourselves. The closer a relationship, the more vulnerable people tend to be. This feeling of vulnerability often sabotages secure connections. The more exposed you feel, the more vigilant and guarded you become. You may even try to undermine the other person's sense of security to regain a sense of control. Each relationship builds on different domains and levels of connection. The second key element of a resilient relationship is connection. You can connect to others in eight different ways. Emotionally, intellectually, psychologically, sexually, physically, romantically, practically and philosophically. You may connect in several of these ways, at different levels. You might connect only intellectually with an acquaintance, but in a romantic relationship, you're likely to connect across all domains at much deeper levels. Emotional connection is the most important connection for resilient relationships. Three main triggers can cause disconnection. 1. Shame. You may feel shame when someone's actions suggest that you are not good enough. 2. Contempt. Feelings of contempt often arise when people judge others as inferior, and thereby distance themselves. 3. Anger. When you feel others treat you unfairly, anger is a common emotional response. In order to build an environment that helps you connect, you must first recognize your own needs. Simply giving yourself permission to have needs is an important first step to honoring them. Being aware of your needs will help you formulate them for others. Expressing what you need, clearly, to the other person will make it easier for that individual to respond to and meet those needs. Make sure that you don't confuse wants with needs, however. Be emphatic and understanding toward yourself, others and your environment. Behaving with integrity means acting in a way that corresponds to your most closely held moral values. For most people, these core values will include compassion, justice, honesty and courage. Acting with integrity reduces the risk of shaming others and yourself. Decreasing the risk of feeling shame, in turn, increases the sense of security and connection. You show integrity in the way you treat yourself, respond to others and interact with the world. When we're disconnected from the experience of another, we are much more likely to say or do something hurtful, even if we don't intend to. Empathy, which means putting yourself into someone else's shoes, helps you act with integrity. People who tend to be more rational than emotional might struggle to feel empathy. But they can achieve the same effect by identifying with the other person on an intellectual level. Power imbalances within a relationship will undermine security and connection. Every relationship has certain power dynamics that shape each person's actions and behaviors. The more empowerment and self-worth you feel in a relationship, the more likely you are to operate with compassion rather than control. Two types of power exist in relationships. Power over, which is competitive and disempowers the other person, and power with, which is cooperative and enabling. People often don't recognize when they're attempting to control another and they're typically unaware of the way their self-worth influences, and is influenced by, power dynamics. People who try to exercise power over others generally gain a sense of self-worth by making others feel inferior and shaming them. The power over type of power most commonly manifests through psychological control, which can result in emotional and physical abuse. Psychological control can be difficult to spot, as it tends to involve one person gradually undermining another individual's belief in his or her own perceptions and sense of reality. Setting and being aware of your own physical, emotional, psychological and sexual boundaries will allow you to recognize when someone tries to exercise power over you. Relationships can become dysfunctional because of the external and internal systems involved. 
Family units, social groups, and society as a whole help determine the roles you play and the rules you follow in your relationships. For example, in a family, it is likely that one person will take on the role of caretaker, which involves looking after the family system. Another member might have the role of the scapegoat, the person who often takes the blame for any dysfunction within the family. Roles and rules in relational systems are often implicit rather than explicit. Most of us follow a set of invisible guidelines in our relationships that have never been stated aloud but that powerfully shape our experience with ourselves and each other. Dysfunction within relationships can appear if a power imbalance exists in the macro system. For example, being male, white or heterosexual often offers implicit privileges and power over others. Dysfunction also occurs because of internal systems. Parts of your personality, or self, may be more vulnerable or defensive because of painful childhood experiences. These parts can trigger unhealthy reactions. Recognizing the different aspects of your selfhood and understanding how they make you act can help you build resilient relationships. Sharing your insights about your feelings and behaviors with other people also allows them to respond to you in a helpful and healing way. Many people wrongly believe that personality differences equal relational incompatibility. Everyone has unique, inborn personality traits, a learned attachment style, and social attitudes. If your partner's core characteristics differ significantly from yours, it can make building a secure and connected relationship challenging. Most relationship problems are caused not by differences but by the way people relate to those differences. Several common misconceptions about personality differences exist. 1. Difference means deficiency. People have the tendency to judge personality differences as flaws. 1. For example, if you love excitement, but your partner prefers predictability and quiet, you might consider him or her boring. 2. Differences cause conflict. Often, it is not difference itself that causes relational problems. 2. Attempts to eradicate differences between yourself and the other person may be the real reason for the disconnect in your relationship. 3. Similarity equals compatibility. Being different does not necessarily mean you and another person are incompatible. 3. Having similar interests and values make bonding and responding to each other's needs easier. 3. But having similar personality traits can also become a problem. For example, if both of you are extroverts and crave attention. Accepting the other person's personality differences without judgment is important for a healthy relationship. You may need to read up on a particular issue, so you can base your responses and behaviors on facts rather than just opinion. For example, if your partner suffers from depression, getting as many facts as you can about the illness will help you respond appropriately and helpfully. Differences in personal, moral and ideological values can often become the greatest relational obstacles. Generally, the closer a relationship, the more important it is to have shared values. If a difference in values causes you to either compromise your integrity or lose your respect for the other person, it might be better to end the relationship. Conflict is a natural part of relationships, and does not have to be destructive. If you want to have healthy, resilient relationships, you need to learn how to manage conflict. Often, people expect to know intuitively how to deal with friction in relationships. But it is a skill that you need to acquire and practice, like learning how to drive a car. Conflict in a relationship arises when the individuals involved feel that the other person is not meeting their needs. Perceived competing needs, certain behaviors, or instinctive, emotional reactions to situations can cause conflicts. What matters is not whether we experience conflict but how we experience it, how we think of it and how we manage it. Another powerful cause for conflict are narratives, how you interpret experiences or situations. These stories determine how you react and behave. Because you base your narratives on your interpretation of things rather than objective facts, these stories can severely skew your view of a situation. Your narratives and emotional responses are often the result of your schemas, the beliefs you have about yourself, other people and situations. The danger with negative schemas is that they can become self-fulfilling prophecies. For example, the belief that you are unlovable might lead you to misinterpret your partner's inattentiveness as a sign that he or she wants to leave you. Your misreading of the situation will trigger strong emotions, 
which, in turn, will make you act defensively and push your partner away. You can break conflict chains by being aware of emotional triggers. Giving yourself time to calm down will help you respond more rationally and appropriately to a conflict situation. Also, understanding the vulnerabilities underlying your defensive emotions will allow you to express your needs and determine and address the real root cause of the dispute. How you talk about things is often more important than the subject of your conversation. Communication consists of content, the topic of the conversation, and process, the way you communicate. If you get the process right, you will be able to discuss difficult topics much more easily. Healthy conversations should focus on mutual understanding, not scoring points or winning the argument. To ensure a healthy process, you must communicate with integrity. This means being compassionate, curious, just, honest and brave, both when talking and when listening to the other person. A number of methods can foster better communication. Express yourself clearly to prevent the other person from having to guess your feelings, thoughts and needs. Use four-part, whole messages that convey your observation, facts, your thoughts, your conclusion based on the facts, your feelings and your needs. It can also be helpful to add what the other person could do to meet your needs. Practicing conversational integrity means accepting that the only thing we can know with certainty are our own thoughts, feelings and needs. Try to keep difficult conversations to no longer than half an hour, as this will prevent you from bringing in issues that only loosely connect to the problem. Learn to listen actively and without judgment. When you find yourself in a situation where either of you is already very emotional, it might be better to postpone the conversation until feelings have cooled a bit. Accepting things as they are is a first step for achieving change. Sometimes, you or the other person in your relationship might need to change so that you can feel secure and connected. But before you request that the other person make changes, it is important to accept the status quo. Acceptance will help you assess the relationship without judgment, and better determine if something about the relationship really needs alteration. This first step also signals to people that you accept them for who they are, even if they exhibit behaviors you might want them to change. Success is often less the result of increasing willpower than of decreasing obstacles. People naturally resist change. Many fear it because it makes them uncomfortable. But you can create an environment that helps with change. You must allow the other person to deny your request for change, and not punish that individual for his or her decision. Explain your reasons for asking the other person to change. Once you've embarked on the change process, be compassionate and patient with each other. Take aways. Protecting each other's sense of security is at the heart of a healthy relationship. Each relationship builds on different domains and levels of connection. Be emphatic and understanding toward yourself, others and your environment. Power imbalances within a relationship will undermine security and connection. Relationships can become dysfunctional because of the external and internal systems involved. Many people wrongly believe that personality differences equal relational incompatibility. Conflict is a natural part of relationships, and does not have to be destructive. How you talk about things is often more important than the subject of your conversation. Accepting things as they are is a first step for achieving change. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.